All right. Right, we're going to get into God's Word, and I'm going to invite you to take your brochure, and you'll be having a look at, uh, we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 6. We've been in Ephesians chapter 6 for a while now, and we've been leading up to this period of time, and I've been trying to time it so that we could end up that ne from next week. Um, there's so much more I want to share on prayer, but I just want to succinctly just do this one lesson this week on prayer. And then next week we want to pick up because it's leading into Christmas. And I want to talk to you and tell you about this, the story of the Lord Jesus Christ when he walked on water. Yes. How, why am I going to tell you a story about the Lord walking on water over Christmas time? Well, you're going to have to come next week and find out. You're going to have to come online to find out why this ties in with what we're going to share with you today. So take your Bibles and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. And we're going to be looking at these two verses, and then we will get straight into this. And I know that on your brochure is a lot of readings. Don't worry. We're not going to go through all of them. I'm going to explain them to you. Um, we, I put them there for you, for you to do further study and tie in for yourself what I'm going to share with you. But I'll share a couple of these scriptures with you this morning. Ephesians 6, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Father God, as we consider your word this morning, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you that it has been preserved for us and that we can read it, believe it, trust it, and have it work in us. And for those of us who trust it, we know, Heavenly Father, that your word can bring us to that place of comfort and of strength and of peace despite circumstances. In Christ Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Right, now, big topic, big subject. But we're going to do it in one lesson, and then we're going to tie in next week with the Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples that were in the boat and walking on water. How do we deal with and handle these troubled times? Paul the Apostle says that, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So what is he talking about here? Now, if you are praying always, whenever you are praying, Paul is saying, you need to pray with prayer and supplication, but understanding that you're praying in the spirit. What does that mean? Now, when he says that, he says, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we're going to unpack this a little bit. Let's have a look at what is this meaning with all prayer and supplication. A couple of verses I've picked out for us. There's so many we can look at, but I want us to look at some Old Testament uh, scriptures in terms of just what does this entail? So go with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8, and we're going to look at verse 22. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 22. And as we look at this, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 22. Now for those of folk of you here, if you see Jenny on her phone, she's not getting bored with my message. Well, I hope she's not getting bored with my message. But we have somebody else. Alice is not here this morning, so we have somebody else that's online for us. Alice is online, but not here, communicating with Jenny, just making sure that our connection is secure. But, oh, you've put that in front, but that's fine. You can see me online. Okay, so you can tell me, but you can't hear. That's fine. Okay, perfect. First Kings chapter 8, verse 22. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 22. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven and said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. So there's Solomon. Picture that. He's before the altar of the Lord and he's talking to God and he's raising his hand. The, congregation the, the the nation is behind him he's with them and he's talking to the lord they seeing that he is in communication with almighty god go with me to verse 38 verse 38 with prayer and supplication notice the prayer and the supplication you'll see through the scriptures prayer and supplication we're going to look at that 
What prayer and supplication so ever be made by any man or by all the people of by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward his house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. Notice what Solomon says. Lord, you know the hearts of every man. The scriptures say that God knows the heart of man. Thou, even thou only, knowest the heart of how many? All the children of men. Folks, as you sit here this morning, God knows every thought. That's scary. Thankfully, there are only two people that know everything in your heart. That's you and the Lord. I listened to a, a gentleman once, an elderly uh, preacher and, and someone was asking him said but don't you get upset when you hear people saying stuff about you you know you're preaching and then people say stuff he says no no I just keep quiet and he, they say why he says no because if they knew half the other stuff that they knew about me that was really going on they'd have a lot more to say so I just let them say what they're saying because that's nowhere near of what I know about myself and I thought that that's a good way of looking at that you know God understands the heart and so often we we need to be mindful of that where we we look at one another and we want to point fingers and we need to realize when I'm pointing a finger Okay, I'm not going to point it. I'll point a finger at an empty chair. Okay, if I'm pointing a finger at you, yes, you sitting in that empty chair, I'm not looking at you guys. I've got three fingers, at least three pointing back to me, right? So we need to understand that. So when Solomon's coming before the Lord, he's, he's not, he's coming before the Lord with prayer and supplication. That's the point I want to just make. Verse 53, verse 53 of 1 Kings 8, verse 53. Thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance. He's talking, Solomon talking to the Lord saying, Lord, you know, you separated this nation. And we know that if we look at the scriptures, God chose this nation and they were supposed to be a kingdom of priests. They were supposed to be his representative on earth. Well, we know history tells us and the scriptures tell us when we look at all of the scripture, Israel failed God dismally. We can't stand and point a finger, by the way, guys. We can't say, oh, it was Israel's fault. You know, Adam, Adam said it was Eve. You know, Adam said, Lord, it's the woman you gave me. The woman said, no, it's the serpent. We can't point a finger at anybody. Because if we were in that situation, guess what? We would have done the same thing. Thou spakest by the hand of Moses, thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so, now notice carefully, when Solomon had made an end of praying, all this prayer and supplication. Unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread out to heaven. So can, you, can you imagine, see the picture? Here's the king of Israel, coming before Almighty God, showing the nation that he gives reverence to God. He's the king, but he is showing this nation that he is giving reverence to Almighty God. He's on his knees before the altar, coming before the Lord. Okay, you got the picture. Go with me to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 28. And you can look at these scriptures a little bit later on. I'll read them to you. And uh, the other scriptures that we don't get to, please go and read them through. So you can get the whole picture of what we want to share with you. Proverbs 28 verse 9. That's not the verse I want. Oh, because I was in Proverbs 27. <laughs> okay. Proverbs 28 verse 9. Well, I've got verse 9 in there, but we're going to do verse 10 as well. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Whoso causeth, causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. The book of Proverbs is saying here, if you are coming to the Lord and you're offering up your prayer, but you're not heeding the word of God, your prayers have not, no value. Why? Because you're asking for what you think you want. And not in accordance with the law of God. When Solomon went before the Lord, he, he came before God and he acknowledged 
the God of heaven, before the nation. And so we need to understand when he the, turneth his ear from hearing the law. If folks, what I want to show to you today is prayer and supplication must, must go hand in hand with reading the word of God. If I say, if, and there's a bad example because my wife will tell you differently, but if I say I had a conversation with my wife, it would indicate that her and I both spoke, right? I, I, I spoke to my wife. Um, it should mean that I gave her an opportunity to speak. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Sometimes that finger will come up and I'm like, okay, I must keep quiet. Now I must listen to what she has to say. Not so. It's two ways. So when we come before the Lord in prayer, it's not us coming before God saying, okay, Lord, here's my list. And Lord, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to show you today. Prayer, prayer must go hand in hand with reading the scriptures. It's a conversation with God. Okay. So let's go on. Daniel chapter 9. Here's another. Here, Daniel. Yes, Daniel coming before the Lord. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Oh boy, and there's so many scriptures. I had so many scriptures listed. And then I went and took them out. And I've got a whole bunch of others that I've written down here that are not in this. In this. But anyway, Daniel chapter 9. Now, I, let's just, this is a fairly lengthy reading, but let, let's just go through this. I just want you to get the picture here. Daniel chapter 9, verse 3. This is Daniel saying, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication. Notice, look at the word, to do what? To seek. You see that? Daniel says, I came and I, and I want to, uh, uh, to seek by prayer and supplication. Now, if you're seeking something, does that mean you're just talking and you're not actually are considering the law of God, the word of God? You follow what I'm saying? By prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Daniel's coming before almighty God because he knows something. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. Okay, so he first prays for himself. And said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned. Who's he talking for now? The nation of Israel. Right? And have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Now, folks, the nation of Israel had been taken into captivity. Daniel doesn't come before the Lord. Oh, Lord, why did you let this happen to us? And Lord, oh, we are in captivity now. And why? He comes and he says, I know why we are there. How did Daniel know that they were in trouble because of what they had done? He looked at the scriptures. He looked at the word of God that had been written by Moses and he was reading and he was saying, hang on. The word tells me we're in this predicament because of what we have done. So therefore, his prayer was in relation with the word. He needed to know and understand. Verse 6, neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in the name of our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as it is this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are afar off through all the countries, uh, whither thou hast driven them because of their trespasses that they have trespassed against thee. So Daniel's saying, I know why we're in this predicament. We're in this predicament because we haven't followed the word of God. Now, verse 10, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws. What do we read about in Proverbs? If we're not going to consider the word of God, if, if Israel didn't consider the word of God and they just came and they offered their prayers and they said, oh Lord, do this and oh Lord, do that and oh Lord, deal with our enemies. And God says, hang on a minute. Have you been doing what I've asked you to do? And that's how the Lord dealt with the nation of Israel in that time. Now, the question is, is he dealing with us in the same way? Has the Lord sent coronavirus because we are not focused on the Lord and so that we can all get locked down? No, 
That's not how God is operating today. We're going to show you that. That's not how God is operating. But I wanted to show you that when Daniel was praying, he prayed in relation to the word of God. Look at verse 13 of Daniel 9. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. He read Moses' writings. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord. All this is happening. Oh, we're just going to carry on. Lord, we're just going to do our own thing. We made not our prayer before our Lord God and that we might turn from our iniquities and do what? Understand the truth. Okay, point made, I hope. So when it comes with all prayer and supplication, it's not about you and I coming before the Lord, Lord, and saying, Lord, here's my list. This is all what I want you to do. It's us coming before the Lord, reading the scriptures and saying, Lord, speak to me. And you talking to the Lord. And telling the Lord everything that is on your heart. And we're going to explain that to you now a little bit more. So go with me to the book of Acts now. Right? So now we, we move on to uh, the book of Acts. Now the Lord Jesus Christ has been on earth. He's come. He's fulfilled all of the prophecies that were there. By the way, had the nation of Israel read the word of God, they would have known and understood that the Lord Jesus Christ had indeed come to earth. And we're going to look at that over the next few weeks as we consider Christmas when the Lord Jesus Christ came to earth. Folks, he wasn't this baby that came and was going to be of just this tiny little baby and nothing. He came in through humanity's way through a virgin birth, but he came as God. Fully man, but fully God. And he had all power. We're going to show you that next week. Now, have a look at what's happening in Acts chapter 1, verse 10. Now, here's the story of the Lord Jesus Christ has told his disciples, you've got to go and wait. I'm going to send you the comforter, and you need to go and wait. And we're going to look at verse 10. He tells them that's what's going to happen, and then he ascends into heaven. Let's pick up the story. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, and he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So they're looking, there the Lord goes. And two men in white apparel stand, notice two men. Angels are men, guys. They're not women. And neither do they have wings. Okay, another story, but angels are men. They stood in white apparel. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. By the way, Sabbath day's journey, just to explain to you about that, on the Sabbath, you were not allowed to do a lot of work, but you were permitted to do certain things and you were allowed to go a certain way you know just like us now when when it was locked down they said okay you can go for a run but it can only be two k's from your house or whatever the case may be a sabbath day's journey was about half a mile what's that about a kilometer okay so it wasn't far they went out and the indication was so it wasn't a far way that they went and verse 13 and when they came in they went up into the upper room where abode Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zealots and Judas, the brother of James. Who's that? That's the apostles. So what are they doing? Well, they're doing exactly what the Lord told them to do. Go and wait. <laughs> right? So they went. And verse 14. These all continued with one accord notice in what prayer and supplication with the woman and mary the mother of jesus with his brethren folks prayer and supplication what is supplication it's coming and requesting lord you have told us to wait you've as oh god our father as as we have seen the lord go You've told us to wait. We are waiting in anticipation. Please let us know when this is going to happen. The Lord said what? Wait. So they're in prayer and supplication. Why? Because that's what they were told to do. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Have a look at this. Acts chapter 6 verse 1.
Acts chapter 6, verse 1. And in those days, when the number of his disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now, what was happening is there were some poor folks, there were widows that needed to be looked after and taken care of. And these guys were moaning and saying, yeah, but hang on a minute, why are you looking after them? You know, you're giving them food parcels, but not us, if I can put it in a modern context. What's going on here? Then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, now notice, this murmuring, this stuff that's happening, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Now, they were not minimizing the importance of what was happening, but what they were bringing was the importance of sticking in the word and sticking in the prayer that they needed to do. Why? Because they were the spiritual leaders of those folks. They needed to keep them focused. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report. Oh, boy. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine meeting? Right, guys, we're going we're gonna to put this out there now. And we want seven men of honest report. Folks, when people look at us as the representatives of heaven, as ambassadors of God, you know what we need to be doing? Of good report. Ladies, gentlemen, we need to be able to be trusted. The world is in a mess. And we need to, by our prayer and supplication to God, be focused on what God wants us to be focused on to be fulfilling the ambassadorial role that you have. As you sit here this morning, good morning, ambassadors. By the way, good morning, saints. Brothers and sisters in Christ. That's the role we have. Look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost. In other words, you, you, you know, controlled and filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give, this is the disciples, we will give ourselves notice continually to what? To prayer and to the ministry of the word. You see that? So these 12, we're going to focus on this, bring this. Why? Because if they were focusing on the word, if they were focusing in prayer, and they were teaching God's word, what would have happened to the people? Stay focused. Folks, that's why you and I gather. That's why when we gather, we, it's not about a feel good. It's not about feeling good. It's about us getting into the word, understanding God's word, and knowing who we are in Christ being secure in that so we can go out and allow the Lord Jesus Christ to live in and through us so we can be the ambassadors God has called us to be. Our prayers need to be around that. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. Notice, yes, that's what we want you to do. You focus on the prayer. You focus on the word. You keep us in the word. Follow that? As I'm talking to you now, a scripture comes to mind where Paul the Apostle says, as a servant of the Lord, not strive, but be gentle, patient, apt to teach. I've got to be patient with you guys? <laughs> oh, you've got to be patient with me? Okay, all right. You're a servant of the Lord too. Just remember that. And, stay, and saying, please the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Stephen, who was Stephen, and Philip. These guys come up again in the scriptures, folks. They were faithful men. And Pronochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Pomnus, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on him. In other words, they ordained them. They made them stewards, deacons. That's how important it was that the ministration to the poor was going to be properly handled, folks. You follow that? The apostles, we're going to stick in the word. We're going to stick in prayer. We're going to keep you focused on the word because that's what's going to be working. But we want honest people who are going to fulfill the functional roles. Folks, and that's why I've said to you over and over and over. The ministry here at our fellowship is not about the minister. It's part of it. But it's about you folk fulfill, fulfilling the God-given role that God has for you. And that's 
standing in a queue. Okay, I know this is not possible now anymore. I'll tell you guys, smile. Well, I mean, you can smile, but no one's going to see it because you're standing in the, in the shops. Um, and and I, had, I had a lady say to me, I think I know you. And I stood back and I went, and I put my mask back up. And she said, oh, now I know who you are. But smile with the eyes, that friendliness. That's who you are. You're an ambassador of Christ, folks. And if you focused on the Lord and you focused on his word by prayer and supplication, those are the things. You see, it's not about us getting. It's about us being used of God. And the word of God increased, verse 7, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Okay. Now, so here's the question. So how do we pray today? What must our prayers be about? Let's have a look at a couple of things. Paul the Apostle's prayers. And I'm just going to point a couple of them out to you. Just I, I, let the word of God speak to your heart this morning and just have a look. Understand, Paul was a man who was beaten a number of times, five times. In fact, he was put in jail a number of times. He faced many challenges. His own people despised him because the Jews turned against him because he was now preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's his prayers. Go with me. We, we were in Ephesians chapter six. I didn't tell you to keep your hand there, but just go back with me to Ephesians six quickly. Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter six. And we're going to look at verse 18 and 19, 18 and 19. Ephesians six, 18 and 19 saying, praying always. Folks, praying always. Prayer. You need to know you can pray at any point in time. You know why? Because God, the Holy Spirit lives within you. You can be sitting at your desk and you can have just been moaned at by your boss or a work colleague right there in that, in that moment. You know who's with you? Almighty God, through the Holy Spirit that lives within you. You're not alone. In that moment that you're facing that issue and that challenge, you're not alone. And God hears your cry of your heart. The word of God, I've showed you that. God knows your heart. You're sitting there. You're thinking to yourself, I can't phone anybody now. I can't speak because they're going to hear me. God hears you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives within you. And you need to know and understand. You have the God, the creator of heaven and earth with you 24-7. He knows your heart. You don't have to wait till you get home to have a prayer with him. Now it is good to have what I call focus prayers. You know, when you take your time, you go and sit down, you open the word of God, you read the word of God, and you, and you focus and you meditate on the word, and you focus and you meditate on the Lord. But the point I'm trying to make with you is, folks, you have communication with God 24-7. I sometimes get notifications on my, on my phone. I don't know if you get this, and it says to you, your battery power is running down because you have an app running in the background. Hello? Well, I want to turn that around and say... Your security is secure and you have constant reminder of my love because my Holy Spirit is constantly with you. So your battery doesn't need to run down. You follow what I'm saying? So is it, it is important that as a family, gentlemen, ladies, it's important as a family, we come around the meal time, we give thanks to the Lord, we give thanks for the food. Paul says we need to thankful, be thankful for that. But notice... It's praying always. There is never a moment that you cannot pray with the Lord. Can you pray while driving? Yes, just don't close your eyes. What I'm trying to show you, folks, is prayer is constant. With all prayer and supplication, notice, in the Spirit. What is Paul talking about? Well, let me ask you. Do you have to speak audibly for God to hear you no now when I pray here we come and we have what we call public prayers I pray audibly do you know why I pray audibly so that you know what I'm praying about <laughs> do you understand I mean I can stand here and I can have a silent prayer but you're not going to know what I'm praying I pray audibly for your benefit of you knowing what I'm talking to the Lord about Folks, if we begin to understand how God's 
communication system works, boy, oh boy, I, I'm hoping it's going to change your prayer life completely. That you don't have to say, well, I'm going to, when I get home tonight, I've got to talk to the Lord about this. Hey, if you've thought about it, you've spoken to the Lord. You need to recognize that. And you need to know that they need to, they need, yes, there needs to be time where you come and you, you sit. And I, I, I know that there are some folks that go into their study, they sit, they have some folks sit outside and, and look, uh, you know, on the, uh, the, on the veranda and they look out and, and, and whatever the case may be. You find a spot where you can have your, your reading and your focused prayer. But I want you to know when you get up from there, you haven't stopped your communication with God. That's the point I'm trying to make. You get up there, the Lord goes with you, folks. You don't leave the Lord in your room. You don't leave the Lord where you've just had your prayer. You need to know that and understand that. And God constantly is with us. Paul says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Now notice, what does he ask? And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Do you pray for one another? Are we, are we praying for one another? Are we praying, Lord, you know, be with my brother and sisters as they go through these challenges. That's why we give you the prayer list. So you can pray for the, I know that you don't know all the challenges. We can't, we can't break confidentiality, but if the person's asked to put their name on, yes, and I know that we do get to hear of what's happened in, in terms of some folks, but you lift that name, Lord, I pray for so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. You lift them up to the Lord for the saints. You know what happens when you pray for one another? I always say to my wife, if somebody comes to mind and you wonder how they are and you have not been in communication, pick up the phone and phone them. Or send them a WhatsApp. Whatever the case may be. If we're praying for one another and we're thinking of one another, are we not going to be mindful of one another? And then Paul goes on verse 19, and for me, now notice, understand, please, you must think of the mindset of Paul. He's, he's beaten, he's imprisoned, he's got all these things. Boy, oh boy, if I was Paul, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be, Lord, I want justice. I want righteousness. I want these people who have falsely accused me to be. Notice what he prays. And for me, pray for Paul. Why? That utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel. That's his, that's his concern. Pray for me so that I can keep sharing the gospel. When we look at that and we see that, notice verse 20. For I am an ambassador in bonds. He's in jail, but he's, he's an ambassador. That thereunto, therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Paul asks for prayer. He asks for prayer to speak boldly the truth. You know why? Because he knew that that's what the folks need to hear. When you begin to focus on the Lord and on his word, and you know that you have a communication system 24-7, and by the way, that communication system is operating whether you know it or not. You know, it's like, I mean, I've been thinking about an example to give you, and I'm going to give this an example, and maybe you're going to think afterwards it's a lame one, but anyway, I'm going to give it to you nonetheless. Right. So, my wife and I decide, okay, we're going to go on a trip. And we're going to travel, and we pack the car, and we discuss what we're going to pack, and what we're going to take, and what we're not going to take, and all those kind of things, right? And we have this discussion about where we're going to go. Da, da, da. And, and it's a focused discussion. We, we put everything together, and there we go. We pack the car, and we're going. We're driving down the road, and then she says, have you put that in? Uh... Mm, I think so. What about this? What about that? How many of you have gone on holiday and left and five k's down the road, you turn around? Greg, you guys go camping. You were telling me the other day, you pack your caravan ready no matter what, okay? But there's always something. Now think about this. Now, <laughs> so eventually we get out of town. We're now gone. We've had this focused discussion, whatever. We're traveling down the road. And we, we now I'm focused on the, I'm driving. Let's say I'm, it's my turn to drive. I'm driving. Yes, we take turns. Well, I'm driving and we just, we're talking. But we're not looking at one another and she'll mention something and I'll mention something and whatever. And then we'll stop and we'll stop at a roadside 
and then we'll talk. And so, by the way, you, you mentioned so and so. That's tell me more. Now, what am I doing? I'm looking at her. I'm very focused. But we had the discussion. But now I'm very focused, and now I want to know more about that particular issue. Think about prayer like that. Right? You get up in the morning. And let's say you have your coffee, whatever, you focus, you take the word, you read through the word, you, you, you're very focused talking to the Lord. But then you get up, you don't stop praying, folks. You may think you have, but if God the Holy Spirit lives within you, right? Are you not in constant communication? Whoa, isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful that, hey, you know what? I've just had my focus, pray with the Lord, but you know, he's with me no matter what. And that's what Paul is talking about here. When we begin to understand the focus of what we have with the prayer. Now we finished, we've stopped, we get back in the car and, we, and, we, and now we just have general chit chat and whatever have you. And sometimes there's silence. The question is, is my wife still with me in the car? <laughs> Hopefully if I haven't left her behind. And we don't say anything. And next minute there's a phone call or whatever, and then and I hear her talking to someone and say, Who is that? What did they say? You, you follow what I'm trying to say? We we in each other's company, we're there. And then when we get to the end, we we stop and then we say, Hey, let's stop and have have a meal or whatever. And then you folks say, Oh, that trip went well, or this or that, or what about this, or what about that? So there's times of absolute focus, and there's times where you're just having a discussion. And then there's sometimes when you say something and you think the person hasn't heard, boy, oh boy, and they've heard. They've heard. In the funeral I did yesterday, the young grandson of this gentleman was telling me, he said his grandpa got rather deaf toward the end. And he would have to tell him something and he would have to tell him again. And he would have to tell him again. And then he would get upset and he would shout at the grandpa. And he would say, I heard you. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I said, well, I wonder when he didn't hear or did he hear. Folks, the Lord is with you 24-7. Know that. Understand. Let it change your prayer life. And what I mean by that is knowing that God is with you all the time. You need to have that focus time, but you need to know that you don't stop. That's powerful. Go with me to Philippians chapter 1. I, 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 as I said, we're not going to get through all these, these scriptures. Just one more scripture I want to see. And please go through all the scriptures here. And th those are only some of the of prayers that Paul has prayed. And we'll, we'll pick up on some of these next week. But Philippians chapter 1. Here's a prayer. And we're going to go through this one quickly. Here Paul prays and he says, verse 3, Philippians 1, 3. I thank my God, notice, upon every remembrance of you. You know what that means? Every time he thinks of them, he thanks the Lord for them. Isn't that constant prayer? Is that praying? Or, that's what Paul talks, praying always. You think of a family member, you think of a friend. He says, always in every prayer of mine of you making request with joy. Now, hold on, making request. You know what that is? That's supplication. With joy. What is Paul making request for? For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he, that's God, almighty God through Christ, which began a good work in you. When did the good work begin? The moment you trusted Christ, God, the Holy Spirit enters into you. And that's when the good work starts in you. Will perform it until the day of Jesus, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. In as much as both in my bonds and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel. Paul's in prison and who's he worried about? His fellow believers. Ye are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray. What, are, what is Paul praying for? Listen to this. That your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgment. That ye may approve the things that are excellent. That ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. But 
How far are we going down? Verse 11. Okay, well, I, I needed to end. Verse 12. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Paul's prayer to the Lord for these folks is that they will be filled with what? Sincerity, with love, being filled with the fruits of righteousness. How is that going to happen? Focus on the word. Focus on the truth of God, who God has made you in Christ. Now, I'm going to leave you to read through Colossians and 1 Thessalonians and 1 Timothy. You can also write down there 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Um, in actual fact, let me just read to you this, this one here that I saw last night. And I thought, no, I've got to share this with you. What's the use of having a mind if you can't change it? 2 Thessalonians. This one quickly. It's not in your notes. So write it down. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Look at this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 um, and verse, verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. What's Paul giving thanks for? He's giving thanks for the Thessalonian believers that are doing what? Caring for one another. Caring for one another. Why? So that we, verse 4, we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all persecutions and tribulations that you endure. These guys were going through tribulation and they were going through turmoil and persecutions. Hello, 2020. But what were they doing? They were focused on each other. They were focused on the sharing the love of God with each other. How do you think that's possible? If it wasn't that they were constantly focused on the word and in prayer with Almighty God. Not Lord, I want this and Lord, give me that and Lord, do this and Lord, do that. Lord, show me. Show me through your word what it is you'd have me to do. Love, kindness, care, compassion. Praying in the spirit, Paul talks about Go with me to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Let me just show you this. We're just going to read verse 9. I've got down there for you in Paul's prayers, Colossians 1. Read that when you have a moment. But I just want to point out Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Colossians 1 verse 9. Notice. Paul writes, he says, for this cause, well, he's heard about their faith and he's heard about the hope that is laid up in heaven, the hope that we have. He says, for all these things, for this cause, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. How do we know that? Well, Paul says, every time I remember you, I'm praying for you. And to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. That's God's will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. How is that possible? Well, Paul's praying that they would read the word. Paul's praying that they would understand the word. Paul's praying that they would get and understand what it is that, they, that Paul was trying to tell them through the word. Reading the word, prayer, hand in hand. Verse 10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful. Here's that fruitfulness again, in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. How do you increase in the knowledge of God? You read the word of God. The more you read God's word, the more you see who you are in Christ, the more you understand what Christ has done for you. You know what it should do? The more it should motivate you to love and care for one another. Those are the prayers we need to be praying. Lord, show me in your word. As I read your word, show me what it is you'd have me to do. What is it that Paul would have you to do? All men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Focus on that. I think so often our prayers are around us what we want. But thankfully, the Lord knows what we need. <laughs> go with me to, to uh, Ephesians, uh, Romans. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 8. I'll skip a scripture there from Ephesians. Go and read Ephesians 1, 13 to 19. But go with me to Romans chapter 8 quickly. I want to show you something here in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. Like I said, folks, this, this subject is so vast. I'm just trying to bring it succinctly to you so that we can understand. Prayer is way more than I think most of us think it is. Romans 8, verse 20. Romans chapter 8, verse 23. Romans 8, verse 23. Now notice this. 
Let's go from verse 22. Let's get the, the flow of it here. For we know, Paul says, we know something. We know what? The whole of creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Oh boy, how true is that verse? The whole of creation groaning and travailing. Hey? <laughs> Anybody here not groaning and travailing? Anybody here not faced any challenges? Hello, tell me your secret. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, this year in the ministry, particularly the last, I'd say, six weeks for me has been probably the most, the toughest in terms of the number of folk we've dealt with from a counseling perspective, from a illness perspective. I, I feel it within my spirit. I feel the, the burden. Um, please don't get me wrong. I'm fine. I don't. Anybody send me messages and I'm fine. But I'm just saying to you, from, from a physical perspective, I, I know I need to, I've, I've made sure that I get rest. I go out. I, well, for a while, I didn't know after I tripped and fell, but nonetheless, but I know that within my, I can feel that. I can feel it. And, I, and I'm sure you are feeling the same way. But you know how we get through that? Look what Paul says in verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. That's the capital S. That's God the Holy Spirit. We have God the Holy Spirit living within us. We have the first fruits. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves. Oh boy, yes, I relate to that. Waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of the body. What's, you know what Paul's saying? Say, guys, you focus on the coming, the Lord's coming back. He's going to come and take us out of this broken world. Until then, he's given us the Holy Spirit that lives within us. And our prayers need to be around that. Thanking God for that. Verse 24. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? A hope for. But if we hope for that we see not then we do with patience, wait for it. It's one thing I've learned, patience. Okay. Likewise, now notice verse 26. The Spirit, the capital S, God the Holy Spirit, who lives within you, helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We think we know what we must pray for, and we pray for things we think we know, but we don't really know. That's what the word of God says. We don't know all the things. God knows. He knows the heart of man. But the spirit itself, that's the capital S, that's the Holy Spirit, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, folks, that's not talking about people saying gibberish, talking in tongues. It's just groanings that cannot be uttered. And that, that's God the Holy Spirit that is making intercession for you to God the Father because he lives within you and he knows what's happening in your life. He knows the area of your life that's got to be strengthened. He knows the areas of your life. Yes? <laughs> he knows the thoughts. He knows your pains. And that's, these verses of what, is what carries me. I know. I know that when I look at a family and I see them going through the turmoil, when something has happened and the challenges are there, I know that I know that I know God the Holy Spirit is with them. And that he knows what is happening in your heart and mind. And that's what we need to understand. That's the God you pray to. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Folks, you go out this week and you know that God is with you. God, the Holy Spirit lives within you. He knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. He knows your needs, but he wants you to talk to him he wants you to talk god almighty god wants you to speak to him because when you speak in accordance with his word when you say lord i'm going through these challenges lord i'm facing this particular th challenge this particular challenge but i read and i see in your word that your word tells me in romans chapter 8 that nothing can separate you from separate me from your love i thank you for that that's why paul says pray with thanksgiving why because in the challenges you can thank the lord He's with you. Folks, prayer is not you having to go into a little closet, sit there, talk to the Lord, then get up and go out and come again tonight or tomorrow and talk to the Lord. You can talk to the Lord 24-7. You need to have those times of focused meditation, focused thought, focused prayer. But no one understand that the Lord is with you. That's how we get through the challenges. That's how we help one another. Next week, we'll talk to you about how the Lord was with his disciples in the storm.
But thank you for listening. Please go and read through the other scriptures as you have an opportunity to do so. And let God's word bring you to that place of comfort and of peace and of strength. Father God, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you that you are the God of all comfort. Lord, there are so many more scriptures we could consider today. But we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that you declare in your word that we may know beyond any shadow of doubt that there is not a single moment that we are left to our own devices. We can choose to ignore your word and try and do things in our own strength. But Lord, your word tells us otherwise. We thank you that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and that nothing can separate us from your love. Help us to recognize and understand, Lord, that you are there to hear every single cry of our heart. But may we take the time to focus on your word and what you have declared to us, the promises you give for us to hold on to through your word. In Christ Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.